I'm Nicole, and this is Maggie. We want to start by congratulating you on your iFetch. We know you and your best friend are going to have hours of fun together. But before you get started, we want to go over a few simple tricks to help you get the most out of your iFetch. In this video, we're going to go over teaching an out command and then showing your dog to drop the ball into the iFetch device. Training your dog to use the iFetch is a great way to strengthen the bond between you and your dog. So let's get started. In real life, Maggie does movie and production work, but when not on sets or performing at hospitals, Maggie's favorite thing to do is play fetch. So I already knew iFetch would be perfect. When I train Maggie, I use only positive reinforcement methods. What this means is that all training is a fun and positive rewarding experience. And the iFetch is all about fun. To teach these two behaviors, we'll be using what's called a shaping method with positive reinforcement. Shaping is simply taking small steps to a greater goal. The first behavior we are going to teach is called an out or a drop it command. I'm sure you're all familiar with this. The principle is very simple. When you say out, your pet drops whatever object is in his or her mouth. Out is one of the most useful behaviors for your pet to master. As good as it is for tennis ball tossing, it also comes in handy to be able to tell your dog to drop other items that they may come across and pick up. To begin with, I have Beaker on leash. This makes it easier to bring his attention back to me during the training session, and also to keep him from wandering off. We want the dog to have the ball in his or her mouth, so lightly toss or drop the ball and encourage them to pick it up. Or, for a very ball-motivated dog, just hand them the eye fetch ball. Next, present a treat right in front of the dog's mouth, and at the same time, say out. During this step, you should not be chasing the ball. The dog should be bringing the ball to you. That's one advantage of working the dog on leash. The dog should readily drop the ball in exchange for food. If this doesn't happen, choose a more rewarding food, such as higher smelling, tastier treat. For example, try a bit of ham or chicken instead of a dry biscuit. Another option is to wait till your dog is more food motivated, like before dinner. If you have a dog that's very excited for breakfast time, then try training for their breakfast food. When you have reached the point your dog is ready to spit out the ball, we're going to add some duration. So you'll spread out the time before presenting the food. Say out, wait one beat, then give the reward. Now we're going to shape this behavior even more. But don't move on to this step until your out happens every time that you ask. Then you can slowly make it more difficult. Be patient. It'll be worth it. Right? You ready? Now go boy. The next step is not to reward every single time. This makes it a game for the dog, as they're unsure when they'll receive the treat. You may want to try treating every three times, then mixing it up a bit. A few important things to remember. Don't skip ahead to this until you're sure your dog is ready. Only reward when you say out and the ball immediately drops. If your dog hesitates, looks around, then drops the ball, don't reward him. If you do, you're rewarding that delay. People are always amazed how Maggie does her commands immediately on the first try. And I'm telling you, this is the key. Reward only an immediate response. Remember, if you need to go back a step to saying out and delivering the food immediately, that's more than okay. It's the right way to go. Having a solid foundation is always the best training. Don't change anything till it happens every single time. Then you can start to add difficulty. Anytime the dog starts to struggle or not succeed, then take a step back. Initially, the food reward is what's causing the dog to drop the ball, but eventually the dog will drop the ball just on your verbal cue, no treat necessary. When your dog can drop the ball immediately, every time only on your out command, it's time to move on to the next step of teaching him to drop it into the eye fetch. Some basic dog behavior tips. For the best results, keep your training sessions short. Don't practice more than three times a day and sessions shouldn't last longer than 10 minutes. You don't want your dog to lose interest or eat too many treats. We want to keep our dogs engaged, making it fun and exciting, like playtime rather than school. If you find yourself getting frustrated, remember this is supposed to be fun for you too. So take a break, go for a walk, and go back to it later in the day. We're about to start the training process for the second behavior your pup will need to learn in order to use the eye fetch on his or her own. Ready? Begin with your dog close to the iFetch device. 
Right away, you want to make a habit of pointing to the opening of the eye fetch to remind the dog where to drop the ball. As time progresses and your dog readily drops it in, you won't need to point as often or at all. Encourage your dog, with food if necessary, to bring their mouth as close as possible to the eye fetch funnel and say out. In the beginning, you should reinforce any effort the dog makes towards dropping it near the eye fetch device. Now we're rewarding for dropping near the eye fetch and no longer just the action of dropping. After a few trials, start to increase your expectations and only reinforce the dog for dropping it in or very, very close to the eye fetch funnel. Since we are still training, immediately reward with a treat if it's done properly. If your dog drops the ball without getting it into the funnel, simply have the dog take the ball again and encourage the dog to get closer to the eye fetch before saying out. What we're trying to communicate to the dog is that dropping the ball specifically into the eye fetch funnel will get you a reward. You can expect some trial and error as your dog understands that dropping the ball next to the eye fetch isn't good enough, but dropping it in gets positive reinforcement. Another way to explain this is that we're shaping the dog's drop behavior into the eye fetch. Continue this pattern of training until the dog reliably drops the ball into the eye fetch device every time. Let's review a few helpful tips. When training, it's best to only practice with the eye fetch device to create a solid foundation. Don't practice more than three times a day and sessions shouldn't last longer than 10 minutes. And always keep it fun for both of you. In the training process, it's not unusual to hit some bumps in the road, but with time and patience, you and your dog can overcome them. And remember, you can always take a step back. For example, if you feel like your dog is getting frustrated and is unable to get the ball into the eye fetch, then reinforce any behavior towards the eye fetch and make sure your dog gets rewarded. When teaching any new behavior, there's a learning period. During that time, it's not uncommon for your dog to offer behaviors he or she already knows in an attempt to get the reward. It's important to never reward these behaviors. Something else that might happen is your dog may back up when approaching the eye fetch. It's new, it's different, they're not quite sure what it is. When this happens, simply lure them in with a treat and give them the cue to drop it as close to the eye fetch as possible without making them nervous or timid. Over time, through multiple training sessions, you'll shorten the distance to the device. This won't happen with all dogs, but if it does, just have that extra bit of patience and slowly shape your dog to drop the ball closer and closer. You can also help your dog get more comfortable with the eye fetch by rewarding him for going near it, and then the eye fetch just becomes another part of his house. Once your dog drops the ball consistently into the eye fetch and he figures out the game, you'll no longer need to use food or verbal cues. Just give him the ball and let the playtime begin. Remember to always keep it fun and exciting. This is a new journey for both you and your dog, and I'm sure you'll find the training process a great adventure. Ready? Yes! Yeah.